So here we go. Second serve from Vabakana. I said they have not had a double fault yet. We're going to get one here. No, we're not. Backhand return from Blinker, but did set up quite nicely for it. Did kick a bit, but I still think it wasn't too bad. But she dealt with it nicely. She's dealt with that forehand nicely, but good defense from Vabakana. More defense from Vabakana. Lofting up. Drive volley. The most nervous shot for me in tennis in so many ways. Now there's a smash. And she puts it away, Blinkova. And we've got 21-20 because it's on the blink of a serve. Yeah, so it's a shame. The other way around would have been know, a year. I, but... know. I was thinking the same, which is really That's silly. okay. I mean, we should forgive them, honestly. Yeah. We've gone from 1920, so 100 years in the past, basically, to uh, 2120, which some people might speculate we're never going to get that far as a civilization. But we'll leave that for another day. Um, 21-20. On the blink of a serve. It does feel like a while since we have had a match point for her, by the way. And the most of the most recent ones felt like a good return from Vabakana. But it's a bit tricky for Elena. And she puts it wide. And Blinkova has done it. 22-20. Oh, I'm very pleased for her. Yeah. That's nice. I mean, it was always going to be exceptionally painful for one player or the other, and arguably just because of Blinkova and Elena's stature in the game, maybe it would have been worse for, for Blinkova. Obviously, that was her eighth match point, I believe. Um, somebody maybe can correct me on that one, but... um, I don't even know. I think Rybakina was saving her... I don't know. No, Rybakina was saving her eighth, yeah. I'm not sure how many she saved, Blinkova, for sure. Um, I mean, the I wild think with that's... Six. I think... Oh, is it? You Rebecca had six and 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 Blinkov had eight. Blinkova had or... eight. Yeah, that was Blinkova's yeah. eighth. Yeah. No, actually, maybe I... even ninth. Let me wait. No, you that was that was Blinkova's ninth. Yeah, because there's this one before the tiebreak as well. Um, so uh -huh. Luna and Rebecca, the um, R's are out uh, very soon after each other. And so, oh, so Penko is ready for it up as well. Hmm. Many people's tip, but to be honest with you, because it's a, a, a crazy, crazy tie break, that sort of takes precedent as the story. Whereas actually, uh, under normal, you know, most people waking up to hear that she lost seven six in the third. But don't forget, I think was Blink of a serving for it twice. Twice, twice. And yes, she, yeah. She had a, she had a lot of moments, Rybakina, when she could have clawed her way back into the match. Obviously, a few match points as well. So that's that's the biggest sort of deal but still yeah to um Adelaide was a mistake says Ghosty yeah I don't know if these two matches really ruined her but the, the thing is that yeah since then she hasn't been that strong so but yeah I can't really say that the two matches ruined her in Adelaide but it was a mistake to play it I think we said it right away I don't know if this is what made her lose that Brisbane form but uh, yeah, since Brisbane, she has been off simply, despite winning like one of the most dominant WTA titles you're gonna see from someone not named Iga Świątek. Um, let's see if I can listen to what she's got to say. So that was seven minutes ago from Bianca Andrescu. Yeah, right. That was probably at like 1818 or something like that. Yeah, we had a few more match points after that. Um, is Bianca Andrescu a, a Blinkova stan? <laughs> I don't know, but she takes to Twitter, uh, very, not very rarely, but last time I think was midway through um, a, a Rafa match. It might have been the one against McDonald uh, when, he, when he lost the match points, but she's taken to Twitter again. McDonald? No, Rafa played McDonald, didn't he, in, in Brisbane, didn't he? Yeah, uh, no, um, uh, Thompson. Jordan Thompson. Yeah, it's because I, uh, yeah, I, I was thinking because he played McDonald at the Australian Open last year. Australia, no, but and I, yeah, I was that's, that's what I was because their names just are like classic Anglo Saxon names in so many ways. Mm. Yeah, uh, Mario has liked this tweet here from Opta Ace, which is that uh, Rebecca and Blinkova are now playing the longest ever women's singles tiebreak at a Grand Slam, and that was at 39 points, and it went another... Like, this uh, is a this is, this is is a good tweet, okay, from Optice, but some of these stats that I see from them, Jesus Christ, like, today... They, it was, they are clutching at straws sometimes and scraping Yes, out. horribly, like, I... I like, for, oh, good. about Clara Burel, I saw that she is the first French woman to beat an American top-five seed at a slam since whatever. 
I mean, how many matches like this ever even happened since that? I know. Probably like three or four. So, yeah, it, it just BS. Of course, this is a good stat, though. Yes. Yeah, it's absolutely. a good one. But you're, that's and, you, know, you know what's funny? One, one cool. more thing about their tweets. You see the crazy at the end? This is literally that tweeting style. Like, at the end of every tweet, you're going to have a word like crazy. I know. Absurd. Yeah, yeah. And I even saw that in the... Um, they replied to a comment from someone. And again... There was that one word at the end, like absurd or I don't know, other yes, word yeah, or something. So um, weird. it's like an AI creating this, and maybe maybe it's actually it, it, maybe it actually is an AI doing this. Who the hell knows? Yeah, um, it feels very robotic. Anyway, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, you're right. With I mean, I, I think some are pretty cool, and I do share them quite a bit on our on our screens and on our social media because um, they are pretty cool. Like that one uh, just coming up. But you're right, there's like, um, you know, uh, Igor Sviontek is the first Pole to be an American after midnight on a Thursday mm -hmm. in January on Rod Laver Arena or, or something exactly. like that. Um, and Gene it's like, even says match of the year so far. Um, yeah. So far, yes. How do you beat that? On the women's side, yeah, it could be rough. Like, it, it literally could be the WTA number one match of the year, yeah. You know what? I might record it now to save that panic that I have in the last two weeks of December, and I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to get all those done. I might just just take a risk. And, and now that you remember as well, because it, it's gonna be in your top seven, right? Like either it just yeah, but I, you know what, uh, David? I'm probably gonna do five on each side. I've decided oh, okay. after the effort I made this year. I mean, it, okay. the, it does depend on how many gems. If, if we only have three great matches on each side, I'll be more than happy because that will save my recording at the end of the year. But what she's written there, something he, never give up never give up um yeah but actually it was rebecca who was sort of having to follow that mantra for quite a while oh. bearing in mind that it was her that that saved a match point in, yeah. in in normal time so to speak and then i think it was uh blinkover who had the first two or three match points i think blinkover was on about four match points before rebecca even had a sniff of one um I'm just watching here at, at 16.15, they've cut to, and that's a Rebecca error. There was just so many on the Rebecca match point. They're actually showing some Rebecca match points, and I'm guessing it's probably one unforced error after that. But these are, this is the, the, the probably this is the one, the defense from, um, and I don't know why I've just pronounced it in an American way, but whatever, uh, from Blinkover here is really good. You know, struggling to get a racket on it, but actually getting some depth. There was such low net clearance there. By the time she'd managed to chase that down, though, it was there to be won, but it was just the drama that had taken place beforehand. Is that the volley that Rybakina was trying to catch? But this, that was, like, I guess, the worst match point for Rybakina. The yeah. the one where Blinkova chases a drop shot and she gets the ball on the... Like she literally gets the racket on the ball, but she cannot make it over. Yeah, and there was also this one forehand winner from Blinkova, which is like... You can see that she doesn't have full control over it, but of course it falls on the line. You know, uh, uh, these match highlights packages, I think they have a couple of them, don't they? I think there's one that's, I think, if I've got it right, there's two packages. They, 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 they normally do like a three and a half minute one and maybe an eight minute one. Well, I mean, how many match points were there all together? Did we find out then? 15, was it? I mean, 15 match nine points. Nine plus six, I think, yeah. Yeah, so 15 match points is probably a, an eight minute I, I don't think everything is going to be in the package, yeah. Um, no, I mean, I just show us the match points. Just show, just show us the match points. <laughs> no, uh, it has to be more. Just be done with but it. yeah, and generally, I'm... like, when it comes to what we said about the match point number being shown on the screen, like, it should be every single time. And the same for, uh, like, in highlights, every single match point should be included, regardless if it's converted or not. She was a, a, um, she was a breakup, of course, in both sets. She had an yeah. early break, I think, in the second set that were back. Yeah, but second, back. it was like really early, and then yeah, Rebecca got it back. Um, like maybe two all was when she got it back. Whereas uh, third set, of course, she had like the break advantage, like four or four, three or four times, I think, as a whole. So, yeah. Um, okay. Um, let's just have a quick final word on. Uh, well, I'm going to repeat something I said earlier, which is I, for some reason I thought about saying, look out, I think we might have a feeling on, on the uh, blink for the day. I didn't have the balls to say it. And, uh, of course, now I'm regretting it. But to be honest with you, it's such a bizarre match that uh, all predictions can be ignored anyway because it was just weird. Um, Rebecca, I, I'm not going to dwell on the, the Adelaide decision because I think we've spoken about that quite a bit and, and also in the live chat. But um, 
that's that's an, a, another disappointing loss at a slam now for her. Uh, that's probably four in a row. I mean, obviously, Australian Open final is fine. That was an epic match. I think she probably played close to her peak that day. So we're, we're okay with that one. But the, the 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 ones that have followed, I mean, she pulled out sick, I think, am I right, Roland Garros? Yeah. Followed by a disappointing quarterfinal loss, I would say, for her, particularly as she was up in that against Anshu Yeah, but it's still a quarterfinal against a fellow top 10 player, you know, so it's very different. Definitely. And then New York right now, I can't remember, but I'm guessing an early exit. Um, what happened to her in New York, somebody? I don't even know. I don't remember either. Must have been in the sh that half of the draw, and she must have played. Uh, uh, oh, Chastaya, 6 4 in the third. Ah, the I third forgot about round. that. I didn't watch third that. Round. She had a walkover in the second against Tom Janovic, and she crossed Kostic in the first. Um, yeah, um, I'm not quite sure, really. I mean, the thing is, if, 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 if one of um Sviontek, if, if Sviontek and Sabalenka don't go on to win the, win, the, win the title then we're kind of back to where we are with those three so in, in a way it, 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 i don't know i don't know she what are you trying to say <laughs> I, I think what i'm saying is she's maybe the hardest to predict amongst those three despite the fact that they're quite close on their day she is the hardest one of the three to to know what yeah. the back is going to turn up I mean, you, we can, we don't really have to look for much to to know that. Like only really the ranking points, the title count, everything really. I mean, she is the one who suffers the most early losses, and uh, this tournament clearly is no exception. Although I can't blame all ourselves and I can't blame every tennis fan after Brisbane to have expected something different, because um, yeah, after Brisbane it just seemed like she is very much up there, and who knows if she's not better than Sabalenka, and if she plays Shvontek in the Melbourne conditions again, she's probably the favorite, and etc. But now, of course, um, the, the the half opens up a little bit for Ika, but of course she still has to get like a few very dangerous opponents out of the way first, especially Penko maybe, and. Um, yeah, I, I think I said it before the event like a hundred thousand times that on the women's side I just don't look at potential semifinals really because it doesn't make sense. Like it's rarely gonna happen. And also Vanch's big big time. Yeah, I was just about to say the same. Right? Vanch and his brave prediction of ha having all four seeds in the semifinals on both the men's and I'm not having any of that. I I am so disappointed. Vanch, if you're watching, I'm so disappointed in you. Not because Rebekina lost, but because of your bold ish prediction yeah bold, 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 and also Vansh told me and and i'm also very disappointed in him because of that because he told me that for every match the australian open channel puts out an eight minute video highlight and i was yeah. like wow that's amazing but it's only like three or four main courts so, so oh, okay yeah what is he talking about and i was looking for highlights for menshik shapovalov i watched it but i was looking for highlights to put in an article but no actually they they, they don't exist it would be actually I, super awesome if they really did that. If they really had eight-minute video highlights for every match. Gene here saying uh, Coco has a real chance to win the tournament. I mean, obviously the opposite side of the draw, but I still I disagree. I disagree too. I think she's the next one to fall. She's I gonna, think she's, she's she's the one who can't beat Sabal and Kanchi on take back to back. And, yeah, um, and I think and, she and, might. And fall that's my it. issue. I don't know because her draw has really opened up. Like uh, she's not gonna play Garcia in the forefront. She's not gonna play. Um, um, Fernandez in the third round. If she loses to Parks tomorrow, that wouldn't be weird, but also Parks can just throw in a random performance and, you know, make a hundred and first errors in two sets. Uh, but fourth round, she would play French or Zakharova, right? So that's super easy for Coco. I don't remember what the quarter is. Is it like, uh, because Andreeva can play Sabalenka? And who am I forgetting she about? Jane, maybe? Oh, yeah. Is no, no. Kinver is today. No, no, no. That's the, We're talking about the players from yesterday. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Or from tomorrow, if you may. I'm forgetting yeah. about one section, literally, and, I, and I'm not sure that is at the moment. It's, uh, yeah, I guess it's Hadad Maya, Timofieva, or Avanesian Kostyuk or something like that. So the draw has really opened up for Coco. If she doesn't lose to Parks tomorrow, I'm going to say that she makes the semis. Which, again, if, if Sabalenka or Świątek lose early as well, that makes Coco the main favorite, yes. But I don't really buy her beating Sabalenka. And I don't buy her beating Shvontek, and definitely not back to back. Oh dear, that's for back and her sister at eighteen. All um, I hate to think what she was like as she saw her sister put that 
uh, I think it was a forehand into the tram line at the end. Um, um, one one more thing on Vibakan, and then we're going to switch to Runa. Um, and, and I don't know your plans for the rest of the day and how fresh you are, Damien, but um, are you free for one, a last ball drops? Yeah, I guess I am. I uh, I don't know if I'm going to go to bed now. I probably won't. Uh, that's. I, mean, at least got, I, I, I might go to bed and then I might wake up for. Um... I, mean, I don't. I don't feel like it. And let me just tell you when I have to leave, and then we'll know okay, like yeah, whether I can actually do it. So it's I have to leave at. Yeah, I have to leave at about five forty. So I would All say. Right. Uh, well, tell if you we... what. If uh -huh. you can't do it, I can. Basically, that's what we'll we'll yeah. we'll, we'll we'll fix. So that so it, so basically, we'll have to start at like four thirty my time for it to work. Yeah, so, but if you leave, if you have to, you, you say you have to leave at five forty. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Even let let's say five thirty five. Yeah, even. Yeah. So because I, I, mean, have, I just have my table tennis practice. That's the only reason I mean, why I'm limited. You know what, Damien? I mean, we can even just start before the last ball drops if, if Medvedev is up. You know. Yeah, if it's really close, yeah, to the finish. So basically, we'll see how Safari so Medvedev goes, but I'm, yeah. I, I should be available. And yeah, I just um, have like this uh, window of availability for like the for like the next four and a half hours i guess but yeah hopefully reservoir medvedev is not that long um on the women's i guess we don't really have that issue right because even if thousand azarenka is fairly long that's never really gonna impact us so it's only really reservoir medvedev that we're looking at and felix yeah. is about to close out menshi kurkach fed set yeah so it's only really that much that can I mean, be I'm, so, yeah, I'm going we'll have to see I know at other tournaments we've done the last ball drops um, uh, as the last ball drops on court 17 or whatever, but I did tweak it for, for this one just because uh, of, of sleeping patterns and stuff. And I was finding yeah, myself yeah, yeah. Off as, as Rod Labour was coming to an end, where, whereas I knew that Sakari, among others, was still in action. But but anyway, uh, so make sure you tune in for last ball drops. But we're still going to be here for a few more minutes because I've got one more question that I desperately want an answer from, from Damien before we do switch over to Holger Runa. And that is this. Rebecca, what is the one thing? I think I know my answer to this question. What's the one thing that you would like to improve for her to be, you know, back into Grand Slam finals and semi finals again, if you like? I know it's only a year, but but what is the one part of her game that you think that she could or should work on? Do you think there is a part like this? Yeah, for me, <laughs> like, there is. I I don't really know. I mean, serve obviously is like the best in the sport. Service Ground nice. strokes are amazing. She is yeah, a little like stiff. It. She is a she is a athletically not too gifted, but that's, but that's like something change, I don't think yeah. she can work. Yeah, I don't think that that's something she can work her way around. Like that's something that she just have to live with, and uh, yeah, just find a way maybe to avoid it being such an issue. So I guess if you were like really, really to look at something, then you could probably talk about her returning. But then again, at the same time, of course, she's a very good aggressive uh, second serve returner. I don't think it's a minor, it's a, it's a big thing either. So I, I don't really know what you're going to say. My answer is that I think the all the components are there. And um, it's only like a matter of putting it all together rather than actually drastically improving something. Maybe I framed the question slightly incorrectly because uh, you're right. I think when we look at aspects to her game, serve, return, ground strokes, etc., and and like I said, you know, with the, some, you know, she's not going to be a mover in the same way that Eager is, um, and that's just yeah. never going to happen. But um, for me, it's it's just more of a general thing, which is I, I think there is a, a sort of a, a health thing that she does seem to have dips. She does seem to check out a little bit. I don't know about her fighting spirit, if you like. I mean, today it was there in abundance. I think she showed a lot of fighting spirit. Yes, I today, agree. Yeah. I saw her in the latter half of last season when she was not happy about going to Asia and the buys and all the rest of it. And then she, I knew as soon as things were getting a bit rough in, in Cancun, she was just like, you know, I'm not here. And she she just wasn't there for the for the fight. I'm telling you, Damon, she was not there for that. I'm not saying that she was going to go on and win that tournament. Anyway, I think Eager was the only one that was ever going to win that tournament. But looking back, but... um. She was when when um, when uh, Nick was debating who he thought was going to win the tournament, either Eager or or, or Rebecca, And I said Rebecca is not in this conversation. She has checked out for the season and and but she played up. okay. I mean, she lost in three sets to Sabalenka in a tight match. Maybe, but much to enter the uh, to leave the group stage. She wasn't. Uh, I don't know. I mean, sure, she has been complaining about some stuff. 
from time to time. But then again, in Beijing, she plays very well. She beats Sabalenka, so. She's ice cool, ice cool. And, and you, 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 you wouldn't want anyone better than that. But she reminds me of um, a Formula One driver called Mika Hakkinen from the 90s. You know, mm -hmm. going down to the, the final race of the season, you wouldn't want anyone else. But dogfight earlier on in the season, you know, when things are actually not quite as tense, but they just require a bit of grit, uh, not sure. Anyway, talking to Finns, we've got uh, Emil Lusavoy. Okay, uh, we're back in a tick anyway. Let's switch over to um, Holger Runa. Where did that go wrong today? And I'm asking that question from someone who didn't see a lick of that match. A little at the very beginning, like certainly second set, he looked a little deflated and flat. But did he lose the first set because of it? No, I just don't think he could have beaten Kazo in the first set. Like, I think he was perfectly fine, both physically and playing well. Then, of course, he had the medical timeout, which was like the beginning of set three, maybe. After that, there were a few moments when Kazo let him back into it. And uh, that was probably Holger's worst uh, movement uh, of the entire match, like set three, the, the few games after the MTO. However, the fourth set, he was back to playing decent again. He was back to being a threat, although he did drop an early break. But um, yeah, I think he just ran into a very dangerous opponent who on the day he couldn't really compete with with that sort of physical uh, nibble or whatever in mind. Uh, he just wasn't able to give it give it like his 100%. But that doesn't mean that, you know, Kazo only won because Runa was injured. No idea why uh, Nick Kyrgios is tweeting that right now. I mean, um, just... What? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, I saw that, yeah. And, um, and this is so weird because he's now like a full-time on full -time Djokovic groupie. And I, he I know tweets that, that yeah. as well. Is he yeah. trying to jinx it or something? Maybe maybe it's a joke. Maybe he just tweeted as a uh, tweeted it as a bit of a joke, right? I mean, if if we'd seen like um, four um, you know big names could go out or three big names go out in one day, and it was like Sitsipas was the highest seed left, and then uh, then I would get that tweet. But I, 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 but it's not. It's also not ridiculous to either. It's it's too it's too sort of middle-ish of the road at the, at the moment or and if they were i know that they were had they oh i don't know i'm not even gonna uh, think about it um so, i'm gonna tweet soon that i think men chic and i'm gonna also spell it like that's why i you know emphasize the chic like he spelled Tsitsipas. i'm gonna tweet that i think men chic wins the australian open and it's gonna matter just as much as nick kyrgios's opinion which is not really an opinion like i'm, I'm pretty sure he doesn't actually believe in it <laughs> no i'm sure he doesn't know um Anyway, um, I think regarding the Runa question, um, which I framed uh -huh. for Rebecca, is it, it's a bit easier, right, with Runa, I mean, to answer these questions. I think uh, uh, the, the obvious answer, uh, I'll come to that in a second, but I do think there are some other elements of his game, uh, which is maybe the net play is up and down. Uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's top. Sometimes I remember the Rome final last year it was off. Uh, and may have cost him that final to, to Medvedev. Um, but the, the main thing with Runa is the physicality of, of playing. I mean, even three sets can be an issue for him. But, but for... Yeah, because we don't know if today's loss, if today's um, issue was actually, you know, the usual grandstand fitness, or is it just something else completely? So it's, it's kind of hard to talk about it for now. But yeah, obviously that's a major point. And uh, also just figuring out maybe more of an identity on the court, I suppose, just because he's still like, a bit too all-rounded even in a way that he struggles to come up with the right game plan for the right possible moment but yeah um similarly to the Bakina, the components are definitely there i would just love to see him in the atp 1000 sort of streak that we're going to have between australian open and uh, the french which is basically like five right uh five um, atp thousand events between these two i would just love to see him let's say pull off what he did last year right two finals and that would like truly mean a return to to where he was 12 months ago and then we, we can start thinking about that uh yeah the whole physicality thing and whether the french this time he's going to be able to deliver because of course last time he like barely fought through the cramps against france rundolo and wow. and then had nothing for uh rude so uh not for for rude yeah so um yeah i think maybe let's sort of see him come back after this have a few uh good runs at atp thousand events just like last year, 
And then we can sort of just maybe say we're back on track. We're back to where he was 12 months ago because I'm not really like fully ready to say that yet. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think quarter final is where he's at in terms of um, the furthest he's been at Aslan. Mm, yeah, quarter final, must be. Quarter final, Casper Wimble- Wimble- Wimbledon, twice the French. Wimbledon. Yeah. Twice the French, yeah. Casper Wimbledon, twice. Wimbledon, twice the French, and I guess the US and Australia, no. Yeah. Was it, was because it Australia, Casper? Australia had too much points, right? Yeah, for what, what, what are you saying about uh, about Casper? Was it both both of those Casper losses yeah. were quarterfinals? Yeah, and uh, Wimbledon, of course, also a player starting with a C, but a different player starting with a C, a much better player starting with a C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, okay, let's have one final word because I do want to close this up now. Uh, but on yep. the the victor today, uh, I'm sure during the live stream, I know that you got asked this question a few times, but there'll probably be people watching now. And if I do get around to clipping this as well, there'll be people watching that not having heard the live stream for the, the Runa Kazo match. Tell us something about um, his French opponent um, for those that have never heard of him, for example. Arthur Kazo again. Or, yeah, uh, so. yeah, because I, 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 don't, I didn't understand. Okay. So, um, yeah, junior Australian Open finalist four years ago. So, of course, Melbourne is a venue that he's pretty familiar with, even if he's playing it for the first time in the main draw here. Um, yeah, I think uh, definitely a player who's been improving, but stopped by injuries a couple of times. Uh, there wasn't even a like an Instagram post at some point in 2022 where he said he was taking an indefinite break because he had no idea when he was going to be able to return. That break actually didn't last that long. Last year, he was already back, like almost fully healthy, had a bit of a weaker second half of the year where I think he was a little exposed in that um, he he wants to be the player dictating. He wants to be the player who like just ventures forward to the net constantly, hits big forehands. And of course, he has an amazing serve for his height as well. But when that serve was not really giving him like the most possible advantage, then he kind of struggled to take the initiative to stay on top of the point against some opponents, I guess like, like some really high class players. I don't know if he's quite fully fixed it yet, but certainly so far this year, it seems so. He's won seven matches and, you know, someone like Jere with such a good weight of shot or someone like Rune, he is able to be the dominant force against these opponents. He's like really going for it off the ground and... Perhaps this is what he was looking for. And of course, he's also like really fast and athletic. Uh, I mentioned this earlier today as well, but uh, when, the, when there was that um, base camp competition at the next gen finals and Arthur mm. Fields in the official video won all the all the categories, all the tests. Actually, they also did it for the alternates and Arthur Caso beat Fields in every single one of them, which maybe in the speed ones isn't that surprising. But for example, the jump was, was uh, pro- probably a bit of a... I don't want to say shock, but um, certainly the fact that he beat Fields in all of them, just like the fact that Fields beat the field in all of them was also quite um, something to look at and like some some point to take from that pretty random video if you think about it. But at the same time, yeah, I think he, he has improved it. It's allowing him to uh, return to the point a lot more often, like claw his way back. Uh, he's super fast as well. So... Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I really like his chances to break the top 100 this year. This isn't really based on his point situation because in January he had a lot more. He had a, he had a lot to defend in Nontaburi. He made the, uh, he won the title, uh, the challenger title, and then he also was the finalist the, the week after. He also has some big points on the grass in the grass season to defend another challenger final in like August or September. I just feel like if he keeps playing like this, the overall quality of his year is going to be way. Uh, more than good enough to break it. Whether he holds up really on the main tour in the long run, who knows? But this is just the second time he played a top 10 opponent. First time he threatened, because last year was, of course, at the US Open against Rublev uh, when he lost in three sets. So I think this is still a massive step forward. It's not a guy we've necessarily seen so much at the top level yet, but he has some awesome wins. In 2021 already, he beat Manarino and Korda in the clay season. Uh, of course, yeah, the, the one that I mentioned against Rublev and even uh, not against Rublev, but against um, the one that we were talking about here today, Rune, but also the, the win against Jera was actually already the biggest win of his career in the opening round. So this is the, uh, the second time he reaches that milestone. And in fact, one more win would also give him another milestone and already uh, have him breaking the top 100. He's playing Talon Kriegsport, so it's not, you know, it's not impossible. Not involving players today. Um, it's actually the ones that we're we'll playing tomorrow, but I quite like the look of this little section here. Actually, I mean, uh, I think Manorino Shelton is really curious. 
Uh, I think Fritz Marajan falls into the same category. Sitspas Van Ash doesn't. Um, uh, Sina Baez probably doesn't, although it's a slightly different category, it's a slightly different section. But yeah, I think we've got one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven players that have, that have in, I'm not saying that, uh, this is not me saying I love to watch Taylor Fritz play, by the way, not at all, but I just think there's some curiosity uh, regarding these, uh, three of these four matches at the, at the very least. And um, I think if Pass ends up playing Marajan or Fritz, that, that'll be intriguing. Uh, I think Shel- Shelton against Djokovic would be interesting. I think Shelton against Manorino is, is interesting. I'm not maybe as convinced as you and Jack are that Echeverry can turn that into the dogfight that, that perhaps he wants to uh, against Djokovic and, and make that go long. Um, I'm not. Why not? Convinced. I just not I mean, convinced on a hard court that that that, that Echeverry can can live with Djokovic. Well, like in in what way? What what will be happening? Will Djokovic be like ending the points pretty quickly? Like will yeah. it be like an yeah, aggressive version to, of Djokovic? And and, and okay. if he needs to and wants to, yeah. Hmm. I don't I don't know. Uh, Echeverry, it's like his main specialty to have these dog fights, I guess. So yes, I, I still like his chances. And even when they played in Rome, it was pretty long. Of course, um, it Echeverry's very not much depends on the, on the on a clay court, court though, right? I mean, if this was on a clay court, French Open, I'd be much more intrigued. Well, he used to be uh, amazing on clay and clay only, but I think over the over you know with, over time he's gotten a lot better in hard courts and. It makes sense because, like the heavy forehand, there's no real reason why it shouldn't be effective off clay as well. And the serve, like the guy's almost two meters tall, he doesn't really use that yet. But once he starts, sure. Like once he actually gets more out of that serve, as more as uh, you know, as as much as he can possibly, I think he'll be an absolute threat also on hard courts. Like probably never be like a top ten player on hard courts. No, definitely not. I probably don't, probably don't think he's going to be a top ten player on clay either. But like he is very much capable right now of holding his own against most main tour players. And this has been a couple of um, amazing wins for him. I mean, to beat Murray and uh, to beat Monfils, both in straight sets and both going under two and a half hours. Like literally, uh, not like an etch very much you would expect. Um, I've just seen a quick glimpse of. Um... Oh, Shane Leonard, he's on the team. Two one Menchik, by the way. That's two one Menchik. He breaks two sets for the one. first time. Yeah, he breaks for the first time to go to sets to one up. Wow, 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 wow. So can Hogan Djokovic play? is his idol, Terry? Yes, but he's already played him twice, you know, last year. So I think that helps. I think that helps. Yes. All right, uh, let's wrap this up. I'm not saying, uh, by the way, he's going to win, but uh, I'm just saying that if Djokovic has that cold issue again, and like if it's still pre- if it's still, uh, I know you're not saying he's going to win. Uh, him, it's going to be like four hours at least, and then if it you know, goes like four and a half hours, I kind of like Echeverry's chances then, but only if it goes like really, really, really long. I think four hours rather than the number of sets is the dogfight territory. Time is more time is more uh, important exactly. than number of sets. Yes, exactly. And regarding the the debate, for example, we were just having, um, I can see it being done in in two and a half, three, uh, one way or another. Um, but but yeah, if if it goes beyond four, then we're definitely in dogfight territory. Whatever whatever the score line, even if it's seven six seven six seven six, you know, it's uh it's dog fight yeah coaching. i mean we, we've um, had matches like this which were like almost four hours so yeah um have always got an early break on uh, on uh, method so how about that all right um and so that could be another um you know we've had pagula we've had Rebakana, we've had runa and if Medvedev John, what, what are we going to talk about on the uh, talk about on i know the, uh, i know i was worried stuff. about that um at one point earlier actually so i am definitely going to wrap this up now so that way you and, and mario don't repeat uh, what we're talking about right now. Uh, who'll be in trouble indeed? Uh, make sure you tune in for last ball drops, uh, which will be at the exact moment that Rusevoy and Medvedev finish. And uh, you'll get Mario and Damien finish haha. on the day. And you'll hopefully, I do so hope. I guess no pun intended. Then. We don't get to hear lame jokes like that because we just lost a subscriber. <laughs> that, wasn't la- that wasn't lame. It was lame. Finish. Come on. That wasn't lame. I mean, you should have specified if the pun was intended or not. Right. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go to bed now. I think I'm going to have nightmares over that joke. Um, Jesus. uh, You have made 10 jokes that were worse today. 
No, actually, listen, you didn't listen, make listen, 10 jokes. If people, was... if people want some Finnish entertainment, uh, I'm going to give it to them right now. Let's have some Finnish entertainment. So, Damien and I, we're going to leave now. And uh, everyone else, uh, you can see me chatting to drunk people uh, from Finland for eight minutes um, before we end up uh, finishing this video. So that way you forget everything we've said and you can tune into the last ball drops and it all seems very fresh. Thanks very much. Let's finish this video. So, yeah, I, 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 just, keep, I just keep it going. No, I wanted to keep it going. Never mind. We've lost one subscriber. Uh, from the last joke, if, if we might lose another one now as a result of the repetition. It comes up all the time. I'm sorry. I mean, it just comes up all the time. Seemingly. Ciao, 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 right. ciao. As they say in Finland, I don't know what they say. Bye. Bye. Ready. Play. Okay, talking tennis here at uh, the uh, Davis Cup in Malaga. Just going to try and find somebody from Finland. I don't know if there's anyone here from Finland. Oh, oh, hello. Do you, uh, I'm, you're from Finland, I, I guess. And uh, do you live here in Mal in Spain, or you? No, no, at least not yet. Year. Okay, not yet. When did you arrive? Two days ago. Two days ago. Right now, you're going to be on Talking Tennis. It's a new YouTube channel, and we've got about 12 subscribers. But maybe with you being on, you might help us get to 20 or 30. You're going to have 16. Maybe 16, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me about uh, the tennis so far today, and have you been having fun? Yes, we have a great, uh, great day for tennis today, because these guys are so great players. These guys are good yeah. players? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And by Excellent the way, player. my name is Virtanen. <laughs> <laughs> my surname is Virtanen. He's waiting, he's waiting yeah. his turn. It's, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah, I have a, a racket here also, yeah. so I'm ready to play. A small misunderstanding. We thought he's going to play on a doubles, but okay, so... That's why I, 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 I need some there. for courage, you know. <laughs> what about your man Emil, though? He's injured, so is it going to be... Because right now, of course, it's 1-1. It's all down to the doubles against Canada. And yeah, I, I, you got it on. Good, good. And, and by the way, you're flown from Finland, right? Yep. So you're flown from Finland, you've got a beer, and you're watching it on your phone. Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I know. We are ready. Let's be we are ready. Yeah, full of mysteries. Wow. Yeah. One of the mysteries is. Half an hour for the beer. So and finally, when we got it, so we uh, decided to stay, enjoy it for a moment. Good word, yeah. cherish. By the way, tell me about the beer prices in Spain compared to Finland. Beer prices, um, yeah, uh, quite good actually. Oh, in yeah, Finland yeah. they're quite good or quite good in Spain? Spain. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, how much is a beer in in Helsinki or in Finland? No idea. I would say ten euros. Ten euros. And how much was this beer then? You know? I didn't pay it, so... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. maybe five, maybe five, five euros. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's All why right. I said it's very affordable, of course. <laughs> and one, one last question. One last question for all of you. Who is winning, Finland or Canada? Finland. Of course. Finland. Of course. Finland! There we go. Thanks, guys. Take care. Talking tennis. Talking tennis. Finland? Finland? Espanol? Habláis inglés? Uh, okay. Um, wh uh, why are you uh, here today? Mm, I received the entries from the university. Oh, okay. But but are you supporting Canada or Finland? Both. Oh, both. Very diplomatic. Muy diplomático. ¿Cómo se dice en español? Diplomático. Yo hablo español, pero mi canal de YouTube es solo en inglés. Pero tu nivel inglés tan bueno. And your English? Ah, you speak a little bit. Gracias. Hablamos. Finland? Hello. If you're from Finland, that's really what I'm really keen to find. Um, so this is uh, Talking Tennis. It's not live, don't worry. So if we make a mistake, we can edit it. But uh, tell me about your day today so far. Oh, absolutely great, you know. We've been waiting for this for, for a long time. Yeah, and now right. we're doing it. And it could happen. I mean, right now, 1-1. It, it may happen, but... We'll see. Did you fly from Finland today? No, no, we've been here for, for the golf, and this is the main thing. So, uh, when did you arrive? When did you arrive? Sorry. Uh, they came Saturday. 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 Okay, Saturday. Yeah. And you got here when? Uh, here? Yeah. A month ago, for a golf. Month ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you've been playing golf for a month? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when are you going back to Finland? Oh, next Thursday. Okay, so this is the end of your trip. 
and it's lucky that Finland are ma you know here and they're making it happen anyway. And you had a good time? Very good. All right. Thank you very much. Take care. Buenas. Okay, I'm just going to have one more. Let's go for one more, shall we? Uh, while my uh, setup here is still working, Finland does. Finland does Malaga. Okay, I think I uh, finish. Okay, good. That's what I want. I want Finnish people. And you speak English? Yes. Yeah. Is there anybody in Finland that doesn't speak English? Uh, everyone. Uh, yeah, there are. Everyone there are. Is there anyone in Finland that doesn't drink beer? No. No. <laughs> are, have you flown from Finland like today or do you live here or what's the situation? Yesterday. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what time did you arrive? We arrived at uh, 6 o'clock yesterday. Yeah. When are you leaving? Uh, from Finland. Uh, when do you go back to Finland? Uh, next Sunday. Sunday. Oh, you go Sunday. So yeah. you, you, you're going to make the semi-finals, do you think? Yeah. Uh, no, I think not. You think Canada will no. win? Yeah. Okay. I don't know yet. We have been here two months. Oh, you've been here two months? Yeah. I can, you have a nice tan. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, and yes. what have you been doing for two months, apart from drinking uh, the beer? Uh, garden and look after our house and so on. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you yeah. have a house here. Yeah. Anyway, and are uh, you having a good time? Yes, I have a very good time. Yeah. Viva España, no? What? Live Spain. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And uh, Talking Tennis, that's the YouTube channel. And you're going to be famous. Okay, yeah. I'm looking for somebody from Finland. Is anyone here from Finland? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're from Finland? Yeah. So this is uh, Talking Tennis. It's, uh, it's a new and amazing YouTube channel. And I, you're going to be my last people that I'm going to talk to. Are Finland going to win? Of course. Okay, and uh, when did you arrive? Uh, we live here. Oh, you live here? Uh, yeah. are, you, are you living in this famous like village, like it's near here? Oh, and... no, we live in a big yeah, like, you know. yeah, but that's the famous village where lots of Finnish people live, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah. Uh, do you this live... This the do you... most southern town in, in Finland. And, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> the most southern town. And uh, this is a YouTube channel. Wow, you are playing, no? You are... This is Björn Borg. Yeah, Björn Borg, yeah, okay, good. And are, no are Finland going to win against Canada? Yeah, yeah we're, we're kind of, of favourites now. Of well, almost. I mean, the doubles. No Emil Rusovori, but the yeah. doubles now, you've got a chance. It's even better, you know. Harri, Hyvä Harri. Yeah, yeah, Harri course, is, yeah, is, yeah. Is, is one of the top doubles and players. And Otto, he just won. So he's very hot Otto playing. and very, yeah. yeah, that's nice. And, and Otto has a huge game. So, you know, he's going to be very good do in doubles. Do you have a huge game? I do. Do you I have a huge game? Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> but only in, the, only in the bars. Yeah. Only in the bars here, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Beyond Borg. Beyond Borg. Nice, Beyond Borg, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you as well. You especially. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we got a nice little finish uh, touch there here in Malaga, the Davis Cup. So, over and out for now. But who knows? The finish might still be here in a day or two and therefore be in the semi-finals. And we might get a bit more Finland mania here in Malaga. Take care, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.